The Rebel Capitalist Show. So if I'm an investor, what would you suggest? Uh, as How are you playing oil? Let's start there. Yeah, look, I mean, the first thing is never to be dogmatic around um, a view. Be flexible and continuously watch what's going on. Um, in that respect, I'm, I'm concentrated but diversified. So we're fairly concentrated towards a stagflationary environment and the various asset classes that would benefit in that. Energy falls into that, oil falls into that. Um, I do think oil's got a longer, um, a longer time frame. And, and I, like in other words, I don't think oil's going to turn around tomorrow. But I don't care. Um, I'm looking out with a longer time horizon. You know, trying to figure out what's going to happen in the next few weeks or months. Is, I think is a fool's errand. Um, or maybe there's people who can do it and good luck to them. Um, I'm more interested in preserving my capital and make sure, making sure that I get those major trends right because you don't have to do a whole lot more if you do. You think about tobacco. If you had bought tobacco in, in the 70s when, um, uh, sorry, in the, um, 90s. in the 90s, when they all figured out that it causes cancer, you didn't have to do anything. You literally just bought those things, compounded the dividends, and it was the best sector to own bar none. It beat tech. It beat everything. Tobacco. Dirty, stinky, disgusting tobacco. Now, I'm just that's a big trend. So so I'm more concentrated on that. How are you playing oil? You, you talk about just you're in it for the long term because you see this as a, a secular trend, so to speak. So and I, I my guess is you're not in futures and you wouldn't suggest going into like the uso because of the the contango uh -huh. and right. so you just got a negative role on that so if, if anyone hasn't seen my video on why you should not buy the uso or an oil etf that the underlying asset isn't oil but it's actually the futures market check out my video on that it, it has all to do with the um the, the the forward curve i believe they call it being in contango but so what what do you suggest yeah, I mean, um, I, I, ETFs are fine. Some are fine. You just, but they're all made different. So you got to be like, and you pointed that out. So um, everyone should go and check that out. But essentially, any ETF where it is tracking a futures contract, you're going to get roll decay. Over time, it's a disaster. Even if you get the trend right, so yeah, right. they're literally designed to decay over time. You could literally just short, especially the leveraged ETF. If you've got a leveraged ETF, that is, um, that is tracking futures contracts if you've got time which pretty much everyone has you could literally just short that thing forever and you will over time make money yes it will have spikes and you might get margin calls and get whipped out but over time it's like a guaranteed freaking money maker um you anyway, so the point is i don't we don't touch any we don't touch futures i don't like the leverage i don't want to have margin calls um wouldn't touch any etfs that have that are tracking futures contracts um, but in the energy space, there are some big, big companies like Royal Dutch is one now, Royal Dutch Shell. Um, it's well-run company. It's not going away. Um, and so that's over time. I'm, I'm comfortable owning something like that. Um, it's also relatively one that said, oh yeah, Chris, but they just cut their dividend and they haven't done that for 50 years. And doesn't that scare sure. you? Yeah. Um, we knew they were going to cut their dividend. You could see it coming. And so the market already started. Look at the share price. You saw it bloody pricing it in. It was kind of um, an obvious thing. The question really is this: In ten years' time, are we still going to be using oil? If the if you if the answer to that is is yes, undoubtedly, or at least probably, um, then you say, well, who's going to be on the other side? Who's going to be alive in that time frame? And um, and and how do we get there? And so you look at the guys that are going to survive, um, realizing that they're going to have extraordinary market share because everyone's getting killed right now. And energy is this, this absolute necessity for civilization. So um, I don't think people have to get too fancy about it, um, George. You can literally, I mean, you can go out and buy large caps as if they're, they're, and they're trading like small caps um, at the moment. So um, 
just be if you want to get spicy you could look at um offshore offshore went into this getting absolutely hammered slaughtered um and yet we still globally get about 30 percent of our our supply from offshore and it, it's been treated like a red-headed stepchild because uh greta told us that we um don't need it anymore <laughs> and then all the virtue signaling um, CEOs followed step, as did the sovereign wealth funds, and and that's the that's just one of the most unique setups I've seen in all of my career. This extraordinary shift in in narrative. Now, if you go through a period of time where we have this um, increasing antagonism um, geopolitically. And you're a political leader and you don't have energy security. What are you going to do? Do you really, are you really going to be worried about Greta or some virtue signaling CEO about climate change or any of this? I doubt it. I think that change is coming and it's going to surprise the hell out of people. Um, and so, um, look, in all investing is just a matter of probability. I'm not saying go and back up the truck on it. You can take a few percent position, percent of your your portfolio and put it into something like that, um, and it makes a lot of sense to me. So, um, so on the energy side of things, I mean, and there's many things in the energy complex. Um, Uranium is one of them that we're along. Um, coal, which we've spoken about before, um, and um, yeah, so. Uh, you don't have to yeah, get by the to... way after after our conversation and reading your a lot of your research on it i came to the conclusion that uh i was gonna buy a few things number one was the the shippers uh uranium and coal i bought i bought actually shell as well but uh yeah uranium has just massively gone up if <laughs> people haven't followed that i mean it's up tremendously since i bought it uh after our conversation so is coal uh, and the shippers are are down a little bit. So maybe you want to talk about those three things really quick. Most of these things haven't moved at all. If you, you if you look at a short term um, chart on them, um, yeah, pull it out over a 10, 20, 30 year time frame, and and actually take a look, and yeah, you'll right. see that you you can't even see the move on the chart. You <laughs> yeah. cannot see it. It's not there. It just disappears. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that context is everything. Um, and the thing that that we focus very heavily on is getting these big trains and you sit on them for years, for years. It's not about trying to make money in the next six, whatever, six months, you know, like fine, you know, any and look, a, a blind monkey can pick a stock that's going to go up to 300 percent at some point in time. Right. So so. You know, I'd be very cautious of just looking at, um, you know, how oh, this stock's going to rocket for whatever reason. And look, there are some fantastic stock pickers out there, but for the most part, that's not what we do. We look at these major trends. You get behind that major trend. Look, tobacco we talked about. So tobacco, yeah. if you bought it at the lows, you had to wait three years. It literally bumped and grinded along. Depending on where you bought, you could have been anywhere from up like 100% to down 70%, right? But in buying at those lows, and you waited for three years before it really started climbing. And for the next 20 years, you just made money. And then the dividends were huge. You compounded the dividends. And these things, I mean, you literally would have beaten Buffett by sitting there and just buying tobacco stocks. So like when you think about energy stocks or think about any of these things, they're very cyclical. People, it's it's easy to kind of get worried. They're like, oh, you know, the, the, the price of this thing has gone up by like 30, 40%. Do I take profits? And I'm like, what's changed? Like the price changed. Nothing else has changed. Chill, calm down. Like, you know, and then, uh, and then oh, price of this thing has gone down 30%. Did you get it wrong? Like, well, you know, and so it's it's just, if you do all your, it's like, what's that saying? You know, measure twice. Sorry, me yeah, measure twice, cut once, right? Like, do all your work, make sure you know what you're buying, why you're buying it. And in 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 the noise, and we're in the most noisy, chaotic environment I've ever been in. 
people don't know what to do. So they're jumping this way and they're jumping that way. And, and the most dangerous thing you can do is let price determine your actions. Right. And, and, and if you know what you bought and why you bought it, and then you're fine. And you can keep reassessing that because you will get some shit wrong, but you keep reassessing it and you go, okay, is my, is my thesis flawed? Is there, is there something that's changed? Maybe a government's come in with some regulation that just destroys this. Or make, like there's, there's things that can happen. You've got to be open to them. Again, like you can't be myopic and just be like, oh, it's only this and I'm right. And like, then you're, you're going to get stuffed. So um, that's just, I think, is my way to do it. <laughs>